Let me tell you a fun story about the rabbi. So rabbis, of course, which prophet do they love the most? Musa alayhi salam. So we talk about Musa alayhi salam. He and I, we talk about Musa alayhi salam. We disagree on everything. But we talk about Musa alayhi salam. And I don't talk to him to insult him. I want to understand his position. I would really like to know about Bani Israel from Bani Israel. <laughs> I would really like to know. Because Quran talks to them so much. Ya Bani Israel. Ya Bani Israel. It talks about their prophets so much. They became our prophets. So much. So I want to know what you guys think. So we talk about Musa alayhi salam. And one time I told him, one of the great miracles of the Qur'an, if you don't know, is the name Musa. The name Musa. I said, so what does Musa mean? And they don't say Musa in Hebrew, they say Mushe. So Torah to Musa, they say Torah to Mushe. That's how they pronounce it. So I said, what does Mushe mean? The word Mu for them is similar to the Arabic word Ma. What does Ma mean? Water. Musa is the one from water. That to them, the one from water. Okay. Now the thing of it is, that means that the word Musa is Hebrew. The word Musa is Hebrew. I told him the word Musa is not Hebrew. It cannot be Hebrew. And he says, why not? Musa alayhi salam is from Bani Israel. He's Hebrew. I was like, listen, where was he born? He tells me Egypt. When he was a baby, where, would, where did he end up? Where did he end up? In the castle of Fir'aun. Who, took, who was in charge of him? Fir'aun, Asiya radiallahu anha. And then the mother came as a servant. So when there's a newborn baby, who will name him? The people in charge or the servant? The people in charge. And the people in charge will name him in the language of the slaves, if they're going to raise him as a prince. They will raise him as a prince, yes? They should name him in the language of the slaves or the language of the master the language of the master and the language of the master is Egyptian it's not Hebrew his name is Egyptian his name is not Hebrew but the problem with Egyptian is that the Egyptian language died the Egyptian language was already dead 3,000 years when Rasulullah came sallallahu alayhi wasallam nobody knew the Egyptian language so if somebody asked at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam what does Musa mean nobody could tell you why not because the Egyptian language was already dead. We live in fortunate times. We live in times where because of Egyptology, the Egyptian language was revived and translated. The hieroglyphics and the, the phonetics of the Egyptian language have now been translated. So now we can go back to Egyptian and find out what, what means Musa means. But before I tell you what it means, let me tell you an ayah from the Quran. Musa alayhi salam came into the castle, his mother, his, his foster mother, the queen, picked him up, she took him to Fir'aun, and she said, uh, you know, she said to him, Asa an yadpa'ana aw nattakhidahu waladan, maybe he could benefit us, or we could take him as a newborn. We could take him as what? A newborn. A newborn. The word Musa in Hebrew, in, in Egyptian means newborn. The word Musa in Egyptian means what? Newborn. She came to Fir'aun and said, maybe we could take him as a newborn. Make, maybe we could take him as a Musa. Quran translated Musa alayhi salam's name into waladan. The Quran knows the Egyptian language even when it's dead. Even when it's dead. Quran translates it accurately. She must have called him Musa because Musa in, Arabic, in Hebrew, Egyptian is newborn. And Quran says we should take him as a newborn. We should, waladan. Subhanallah.